It's the world's first robotic eye, designed by engineers at the University of Alberta. The invention can't replace vision, but it can improve the appearance of patients who've lost an eye. This artificial eye looks real, and it picks up brain waves to move in sync with the other eye. Remarkable to watch. Uh, Max Mung is the lead engineer on the project. He's the director of the Advanced Robotics and Teleoperations Lab at the University of Alberta. Max Mung, hello. Hello, good morning. We just saw pictures uh, giving us a, uh, an idea of how this is supposed to work. It's amazing to watch. Can you, can you explain how it works in a way that all of us would understand? Yeah, th this is already our uh, second generation uh, model. The uh, first generation was a little bit uh, primitive, which used a ray of sensor mounted on the eye glass frame to pick up the eye movement and then transmit that signal to the artificial eye to move accordingly. Mm -hmm. And uh, this second generation, we used the, uh, we, call, we call it the EMG signal, which is the uh, uh, signal you pick up from both sides of your head, uh, which basically tells you the uh, electronic potential difference. Mm -hmm. As you move the eye, that signal is going to change. But that signal is very tricky to use. So we have to use some advanced uh, digital signal processing technology to use that signal, develop a pattern, map the, uh, uh, the signal pattern with the natural eye movement. So once we find that relationship and find it reliable to use, then we use that signal to control the artificial eye, to move it in synchronization with the real eye. So that's basically how it works at this stage. Amazing. Now, how did you and the others who worked on this think to do this kind of research in the first place? Well, that uh, was um, about uh, two, three years ago. Uh, uh, doctors at this uh, Compro facility uh, at Misericordia Hospital in Edmonton always hear complaints from uh, patients who wear this prosthetic uh, uh, eye saying that, you know, the cosmetically you put it in there, it looks real. But as soon as you start to look around, mm -hmm. people will notice, uh, you know, the difference. So they say, we just wish if we can make it move, you know, just like a real eye, although we can see. So, you know, they think, what about, you know, the possibility? So we get together with uh, uh, people from uh, electrical and computer engineering, mechanical engineering, rehabilitation medicine, and the doctors at uh, uh, Compro. We get together, we talk, you know, is, is it possible to do something like this? We said, well, we can always try. So we started from a very small seed fund provided by the hospital, and we started to, uh, you know, uh, explore, see if we can do. So after about two years now, we have this second generation, which is quite uh, impressive in terms of uh, uh, control it, move in synchronization with the real eye. Amazing. Do, do you think you can get to the point where you could also have an, an eyelid that would, would blink? That part, uh, somebody did a little bit of research on that. That part is actually a little bit easier than moving the eyeball itself. Ah. So we target, we, we looked at uh, three things. First, uh, lateral movement vertical movement and blink. And among the three, the doctor says, the first priority is the lateral movement. Once you have that movement, then you know, people will basically from a distance, if they not pay enough attention, they won't tell the difference. Uh, so that's the first thing we work on right now. Uh, how soon do you think you'll be able to actually implant uh, this in people? That's a question you know always asked, and uh, it's uh, hard to answer. What we can say is, uh, for us, we are from the engineering side. Uh, we just want to work out the technology necessary to do this. So currently, we have this lab prototype, which picks the signal from external, which means you have to wear something to pick up the wave signal from the brain. Mm -hmm. The next step, what we want to do, is to work within inside the eye socket. When you have the move eye removed, then you have a socket to work with. Mm -hmm. Is it possible to find some signal inside there, which will also give you a kind of relationship we can use, which tells you how the real eye is moving. If once that is successful, then we can shrink wrap all these electronic devices into single chips, small devices, and put everything inside the eye socket. Once that is done, then the next thing we have to answer is, is it safe, reliable, comfortable for patients to wear. So it's still a ways away, a couple yes. of years anyway. Yes, but this is a, a, a first step that, uh, towards that uh, final objective. Just fascinating. Uh, Max Mung, thank you very much for talking with me. Thank you. It's my pleasure. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.